My door bench is pretty much a copy of the Schaefer Brothers benches with a few small changes, most of which I owe to other carpenters. The bench must be narrow enough to fit through every doorway. It must be tall enough so your tools can be stored inside while you're cutting a door flat on top. And it must be long enough to support an 8-0 door. Those are pretty common these days. I built the sides from 3 quarter inch plywood and I carpeted the tops of both ends to protect doors. Adjustable rungs allow you to work on different sized doors without removing or replacing any parts. Just slide the rungs in and out to change from a 2-6 to a 3-0 door. You can make the door hook pretty easily from a piece of 8th inch or 3 16 inch aluminum or steel. Bend one end for the hook and cut a long notch to slide through a threaded knob. Be sure to mortise the hook into the end of the bench so it won't wiggle around. I built the ends of the bench from two layers of half inch Baltic birch, sandwiching them so there's a three quarter inch rabbit at each end. I cut holes for my planer and drills in the same end, but I left the opposite end solid for storing hinges and hardware. You can also see in this drawing the front hinge template holder and lock knob. The holders slide out the back of the bench and provide a safe place for storing a long hinge template. I've got to thank Mike Rutledge for that idea. My legs are mounted on regular butt hinges. I have tried all kinds of things to support the legs and keep the bench rigid. Keep watching this video and you'll see my brother uses folding shelf hinges to mount the legs on his bench. They've got built-in braces. And my cousin made a really cool spreader for his bench. You'll see that in the video too. But for now, I'm using these two swiveling flat bars and they seem to be working okay. They're just 8th inch aluminum screwed to the bench. I cut a notch in each end that hooks over the head of a pocket screw. Like I said, they're working pretty well until I come up with a better idea. You're probably wondering what those 1x6 boards are for on the bottom of each leg. That's to stop your tools from sliding out of the bench when you're climbing up a stair. Or taking a sharp turn too fast in your truck. My brother came up with that idea. This is if you want to set up your chop saw real quickly, or if you want to sand a bunch of pieces of wood, or you need some place to fabricate some small pieces, and you don't have a work table. Uh, this is my spreader. It, uh, I was having trouble with the legs not being stable, so uh, by putting this in here, it keeps the door box from falling down when I'm planing the door. Um, it's removable and stores inside the box. Just like that. The dowel that I use to hold it in place uh, works to hold it into the box. When I was building this bench, I, uh, I've always been a field carpenter and, and had always loved dovetail joints and I figured before I bought a 
nice dovetail jig, I, I should at least make one joint by hand, and, uh, or, or one series of joints. So my door box was my lesson in, in dovetails, my 101 lesson in dovetails. Kevin's a little shy about sharing his workmanship, so I'll speak up for him. Not only did he dovetail the ends of his bench, but he mortised everything in flush, including the door hook, the hinge template supports, and the butt hinges on the legs, too. Yeah, one's bright brass and one is chrome. One's four inches and the other one's four and a half. No doubt he cut those mortises by hand, too. I also liked the way Kevin made his rungs and used proud pegs as stops. After putting all that effort into the joinery, isn't that mix of oak and Douglas fir sweet? There was no way Kevin could cover the ends of the bench with carpet, so he made these foam guards, and yep, they're removable. Obviously. Hi, I'm Jesper Cook. I'd like to show you my workbench. You can see it's a uh looks a lot like a saw stand right now, and uh, it's only one of the things it can do. I've um, tried to build as many features into this as, um, as I typically need. Um, the extension wings are on a, a T-slot, so they can actually slide back and forth. I attached the extension wing with these L handles, and uh, I bought them from the same company that makes this aluminum extrusion. Two turns will do it. Was right off. Added hooks underneath the extension wings so I can hold uh, six tools. You can probably see that there's a router table right here. It's mortised in the router plate so it's removable. Look at this. I plugged the router into this power strip so I can operate it from the switch here rather than reaching underneath the table. See I've drilled holes throughout which is for clamps. I often need to hold down boards in various places. I, um, when I coat moldings I'll, I'll tend to clamp them down at the edge and I have a a hook here to hold my jigsaw. I made these adjustable legs which uh, clamp down with this cam clamp and uh, I mounted it on the side even though it was a little more work because um, if it was sticking out from the face it would um, get caught on things when I loaded in and out of my truck so I wanted it to be low profile and this was the design I came up with. I have holes on the face also so I can clamp boards vertically, which uh, is useful if I'm uh, sanding the edge. This is a setup I use when I either sand or plane the edge of a board. Um, it's held firmly vertically. and. Uh, these clamps are actually really simple. They just have a little cam you undo before it pulls out. So this uh, clamp is really simple. It's just a plastic nut that slides on and then it, you can thread it to tighten it up. Uh, sometimes I'll clamp a board horizontally like this. If I'm um, following a scribe line with a planer, I like to see the line. Um, tend to use these clamps by Festool. There, it's firm. It will not move while I'm working on it. So I've now converted the workbench into a door bench. Uh, the uh, door is sitting on pegs, where I can adjust the height for different sizes of doors. Uh, this peg holds the door, and it's uh, adjustable. I have four different slots for it. 
so I can work on different sizes of doors up to a 12 inch side light and still it will be at a comfortable working height. I modified a quick grip clamp so that it would attach to this aluminum extrusion. And that's what holds the door firmly in place. I have a magnet bar here where I can keep little bits and uh, small tools where they don't get covered up with sawdust. A series of felt strip continues all the way around so when I lay the door flat on top of here it doesn't get scratched. Um, the tools are all set below this surface so they're not interfering with the door as well. So you've seen all the features of the workbench. Uh, this is actually the second generation. Uh, the first one was made out of plywood. I've since added features as I found I needed them. Uh, overall, I, I know it's made me more efficient and it's made work more fun.